everybody, how are you all doing? Welcome to this Q&A video. It's been a long time coming. I've had the time to save all the questions you guys have sent me through Instagram and beneath some of my videos. So I am going to answer some of them now. I don't want this video to be hours long and I know myself, I do tend to talk a lot. So I'll answer the ones that come up the most. If you're wondering why I'm sitting here instead of my usual uh, filming spot is because we're still in the middle of a heat wave and uh, this is probably the coolest uh, most, most shaded area of my flat right now so um, yeah and also it's very comfy I'm, I'm on the edge of my bed and uh, feels less official feels nice it's like casual good good Q&A um, <laughs> vibe uh, hopefully more vocabulary will come to my mind to answer your questions but let's just jump right into it let's get some questions up on my phone this first one is from and i'm sorry for that if i mis mispronounce any names i'm really not good at <laughs> pronouncing names uh majlinankari is how i'm going to say it what would you recommend splurging extra on when traveling hotel food etc well for my last trip i did end up cutting costs for my hostel and it made the experience a little more difficult and like more unnecessarily difficult than it should have so I would recommend um, being more careful and more caring when it comes to your personal needs if you I don't know if you have a bad back or something you yeah, splurge a little extra for for your own comfort now for the rest when it comes to food versus shopping for example I mean that's very subjective from one person to the next myself it would be food all the way I just love trying different types of food even though I do consider myself mostly vegetarian though I would I guess the official label is either flexitarian or reducitarian when I'm abroad I just want to try everything and anything so my personal uh, choice would be food so first of all your own comforts splurge uh, on anything that will make you a little more comfortable if uh, taking the bus from Narita airport into Tokyo is way too scary for you go ahead and book the Narita Express even though it's more expensive it, if it does take stress away if it makes you feel more comfortable um, splurge on your needs first and then my personal choice would be food, probably. I like shopping and everything, but uh, I guess my stomach does come first. Wow, long answer, and this is only the first question. This is going to be a long video. DevilCon1980 asks, uh, should a person stay in one place and take day trips to the surrounded places? Um, well, it's kind of a yes and no answer, because if you don't have the budget to move around, you could stay in one place and, and visit the surrounding places but if you have the budget for it move around have as many different types of uh, experiences as you can like the first trip i did to japan i moved around quite a lot and i don't regret it at all i mean sure you have to lug around your suitcase but there it's definitely worth seeing as much as you can if uh, your your budget allows it if not stay in one spot with good areas around it is just as viable an option in my opinion uh, i have another question from devil khan which i think is uh interesting what should i get in advance such as jr pass sim card traveler's check instead of own bank account uh when it comes to travel traveler's checks i have no clue how that works no clue at all so i'm gonna skip that one but uh jr pass if you are wanting to get a jr pass you need to get it before you arrive in japan so you need to purchase it and get the voucher in your own country before you get to japan sim card i'm pretty sure you need to get it when you're on location because you need uh, if you're, especially if you're getting a uh, tourist sim card you need your passport with the uh, tourist visa stamp on it so keep that in mind when you go buy your sim card and it was what should i get in advance i mean that again is very subjective but jr pass i guess is the number one thing that you really need to get in advance i think there are other passes that you can get in advance but can also get on location um i'm thinking of the things i researched when it came to uh, transportation JR Pass is really the one thing you need to get before coming into the country. There are some tickets uh, to some museums that you can get in advance. 
uh, Ghibli Museum comes to mind. Those you should definitely get early because they sell out like so fast. Uh, I still didn't get to go to the Ghibli Museum because every time it sells out like a few hours after they, they go online. So um, I guess it's just a matter of research for what you should think of purchasing before you go to Japan. Chetana Hola, sorry again if I'm mispronouncing it, asks When you set yourself a daily itinerary, uh, do you strictly stick to it or leave some leeway? Um, yeah, definitely left myself a lot of leeway. It was more like an ideal itinerary type of thing, but it nev things never go the way you expect them to. Like, never, ever, ever. You might get lost, you might stumble across something that's super interesting on the way that you want to visit and it takes up more time than expected uh, you could find some maybe some things are closed maybe some stops require more time maybe like so many things can happen so i definitely never 100 percent stuck to my itinerary it was mostly to save up on transportation so i could really go from a to b to z uh, in the most efficient way possible but there were so many days where either i had done everything on my list and i just end up at a cafe looking at things I could do in the area and trying to improvise and other days I just had to cut things short because I was too tired or my feet hurt or so yeah long story short I did not stick to my itinerary it was more of an inspiration to my day type of thing Jasmarie asks what are your best suggestions to save money to travel and what vlog camera do I use uh, I get the vlog camera question quite a lot is the, one of the oldest Canon G7Xs I'm actually filming on that right now um, it's really old the focus is broken because I've dropped it a bunch of times it's still holding on but yeah Canon G7X is a good camera, battery life sucks, but it's a pretty good camera. If you have any other gear question, I have a FAQ section on my website. I'll link it below if I forget. It's on my website. Uh, the other question was how to cut costs. Uh, I would suggest going to my video about how I budgeted my trip. Not the one I made about the Tokyo trip, but the one I made the very first time I traveled to Japan because I really go from A to Z on how I saved for the trip. But I guess the major cost would be the plane, the decision whether to take the JR Pass or not, and then accommodation. And then I guess the little tips would be maybe don't eat at a restaurant necessarily every day, or like maybe for one meal, like maybe have one main meal, like one, not fancy, because some restaurants are just like, some restaurants are pretty casual, uh, but maybe have one good meal and then live off convenience store food or like I said transportation also I saved up by walking I, th I think I mentioned all of that in the in the big how-to video so I'll send you over to watch that Coffee in Japan asks what has gotten you into Japanese culture and I feel like that is a video in itself so I don't want to give a really long answer to that question <laughs> right now but i guess the long story short answer and quite a boring answer at that would be um manga and anime yeah pretty typical i mean there's more to the story but i'd like maybe to make a separate video about that in the future if anyone's really interested about how i got uh, into Japanese culture. <laughs> Mr. Joe A. Pace asks, uh, what are your best tips for traveling Japan solo for the first time? Um, my number one tip, if this is the very first time you're going abroad, like maybe internationally abroad, like very far from home, all by yourself would be the journal. That was the main thing for me that really helped was writing everything down writing and planning and having every single detail that you may not be familiar about i would write it down in a journal and research it and that way i would feel more calm and more prepared so even things as little as finding my way in my own airport here in brussels um, I wrote that down, I researched it. I researched that first you gotta check in and then next you go through security and then you find your gate. Those things I had never really done by myself so it made me nervous and uncomfortable and researching it and planning it and writing it down is like a stress of my mind. It's a source of stress of my mind. So that would be my best recommendation if you're doing everything by yourself is plan 
all of it, research all of it, even the little things. Every single thing that makes you nervous and stressed, however small it may be. Maybe you're feeling nervous about how to take off your shoes when you arrive in a home in Japan. I'm sure there's a way to research that and write it down, draw shoe diagrams if you want to. The point is to have fun and to make things happen as seamlessly as possible. I hope that made sense. Okay, I have some more Instagram questions saved up somewhere. I have more questions from Madeleine Nankari. I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, first one is, how did you handle your tight budget while enjoying activities? Were they prepaid? Some of them were prepaid, especially on the first trip, like the, uh, the tea cer ceremony in Kyoto, that one was prepared. Um, if I had... I wanted to go to the Ghibli Museum, that would have been pre prepaid. The tattoo I did this time in Shinjuku, I had prepared the budget in advance. It wasn't prepaid, but I, like, I knew I was going to spend the money, so I had it prepared. Mentally, it was in my budget. Um, but the first time I went to Japan, I had a tight budget, but I had a little more room, like more wiggle. Wriggle? Is it wiggle or wriggle? Room. <laughs> I had more room to like stray a little bit from my budget, which I did. Like I could go on extra adventures if I wanted to. I could do extra purchases if I wanted to, as long as I kept an even balance. If I spend like a lot in one day, I would st spend a little less on the next day. And it worked out. It worked out fine. I wasn't too stressed out about my budget. I just had to keep an eye on it. But for the second time, the budget was so tight that it did make things a little more uncomfortable. And I mentioned that in the last video. And uh, I, I did feel like it was a weight, an added weight, an added stress, an added pressure. Like every time I overspent, I felt really nervous. So. Definitely the next time I go, I, I do want to make sure that I have more than enough money. Not just money to survive and to feed myself and like in case of ever emergency money, very, very important. I want to have more money for experiences, opportunities and for fun. Yeah. And the second question I got from Maj was, uh, do you have any financial regrets, unnecessary or overpriced things you paid for? Uh, regrets? No. I guess like maybe the f especially the first time I went to Japan, everything was like, oh my god, these are so cool, these are so interesting, and I and I probably bought things that uh, today I have no clue where they are, that I don't use, that are gimmicky. Uh, especially if you go like to Daiso and Don Quixote a lot, you're like, oh, this is amazing, but it's amazing because you're in Japan. But then you bring it back home and it's like, what the hell am I gonna do with this? Uh, maybe more in that sense, like. Things, some things look more amazing because they're in Japan, yay! But if you saw it like exactly the same thing at home, you wouldn't look at it twice. So maybe in that sense, you, you look at things from like a tourist glasses and it's a little silly. Um, I guess, I mean, I did want to do the whole Kit Kat experience thing, but it was really... It was a little bit over the top. I mean, I didn't eat all the Kit Kats by myself. I gave a, most of it away to my to my friends and family. But that was a, a lot of Kit Kat money, <laughs> a lot of junk food. Um, I don't regret it, but I wouldn't do it again, and I didn't do it again. I, you saw it in the vlogs. Every time I saw a Kit Kat flavor that I never tried, I was like, no. I only tried one flavor. One. Pretty sure I only tried one flavor of Kit Kats on the second time around. So no regrets really, but um, I, I do know that I have to keep in mind that some things look great just because they're in Japan. Oh, it's getting really hot again. More questions, 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 questions. Oh, this question is a good one by, I don't know if it's Michelle or Michele. Clover, Clover three. <laughs> I had a friend called Michele, and it's been like it's spelled like that, but it could be either way. Why do you solo travel? Would you rather solo or with someone else? That's a really, it's a big question for me, and quite a, a personal one actually. Um, I wanted to go to Japan since I was about 14 years old. When I was a teenager, it didn't really fall in place because I was so inexperienced, very uh, kind of small town countryside girl. I hadn't even moved to the city yet, so like my world was very small. And I, um, even though I wanted to go to Japan, I, there was no way I was going to be able to do that 
alone I, I wasn't that brave but I kept that dream of mine over the years and uh, I, then I moved to the city I became more independent more capable like more brave and uh, I still wanted to go but it never came it never came through I was not with the right type of friends I was not in the right type of relationships and in the end when I finally freed myself from all of these bad relationships i had a newfound need for freedom and independence and uh, if you've ever been in toxic relationships and if once it's behind you you just you just need to get out you need to get out you need to go far away and uh you need to go as far away as possible and that was japan for me i like i said i i said i want to go i'm going this is the month where i want to go a job fell through and i was able to confirm my plans and go and it was more of like i need to get out now i don't care if i'm alone i don't care if somebody comes with me i just need to go so that's how the first trip happened second time was me being i want to go again and i didn't feel like trying to drag someone with me so again i just went and as the and also as the years went by between the first and the second trip i became even more and more independent and less I relied on people so much less than I used to so it's more like I'm gonna do my thing I'm just gonna go and uh, sayonara see you in two weeks that's kind of my attitude this, these days um, but I would like to go with someone for sure someone who shares the same passion or just maybe a friend or a family member to who I would like to show this other place in the world that I love so much I would like to show this to my mom and to my brother and my cousins and like friends and family I would like to show Japan to other people um, I can't imagine myself traveling with someone the same way I've been traveling by myself like having an adventure with another person but that's because of how I don't want to say how much of a loner I've become because that's it makes me a little sad to say that it's just because of how independent I've become these past few years especially having come out of so many bad relationships and that's why it's a personal question personal answer for me it's just that it would be difficult to trust again oh my god it's so cheesy and corny but I would definitely in the future when I feel more comfortable I would like to travel with people I hope that wasn't too corny of an answer Ew <laughs> Ew ew Okay, so now I'm gonna go see some comments on my videos Hopefully I can find them Okay, here's one John Wynn asks Would you ever plan to travel to ASEAN? Um, which I had googled and I guess it's like other parts of Asia Yes, I would love to see more of Asia. I would actually love to see more of the world full stop, but I would love to visit China and Hong Kong, Korea, like South Korea, um, Thailand, like all... I'm Sometimes I get in such travel mood and I want to discover everything because of how it really opens up my, my perception of the world. So yes, I would definitely um, consider traveling to more Asian countries, more Asian destinations. Okay, we have another uh, money-saving question. I was wondering how you go about saving. Do you make a goal, save a certain percentage of paycheck? Um, I mean, I work mainly as a freelancer these days. I quit my full-time job a long time ago and I'm trying to make it as an artist. So money doesn't come in easily, doesn't come in a lot. But I do pair this freelance job with some uh, events jobs where I work for events uh, for different companies. So that's like my second job and it helps fill in the gaps. Um, how do I go on saving? Well, I'm not a good example because I don't have a con I don't have the same income every month so I can't save uh, a little percentage of my paycheck. I try every time I, I get some money, I try to put aside but I'm very much in a living from paycheck to paycheck ow, uh, situation currently so saving up for traveling is very difficult I have to rely on uh, birthdays I have to rely on savings I have to rely on taking as many jobs as I can and working as much as I can to uh, be able to have some money left at the end of the month which is why the last trip to Tokyo was so 
dif difficult. I don't. I feel like I keep complaining about that trip, but it was a difficult trip. That's why that last trip was so difficult. Is because I barely managed to save enough for, enough for that trip. So um, it would be difficult for me to answer that question. Uh, witness, it's. Um, I just did. I just worked as much as I could and saved as a penny at the time. And I go as far as picking up euro cents off the floor and putting them in that piggy bank there. And yeah, I really, I really am careful with everything I spend. I buy simple foods that I can make big batches of and that will last me through the week. Um, yeah, I don't lead a very luxurious lifestyle, but I make it through and it's not a lifestyle that I want to have for the rest of my life, but little by little I know I'll get to where I want to be because art and creating is my passion and I totally went off on a tangent. Sorry for not properly answering your question, but I can't. <laughs> it's just about saving a buck wherever you can. <laughs> So many sweet comments that are making me smile. Okay, last question, and it's kind of uh, one I already answered, but by Mr. Universe asks, would you ever consider a group trip? Uh, I would like to travel with other people. This said, I don't see myself traveling with a group of total strangers, like uh, a planned organization, like people coming from all around the world and then traveling together. I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that seeing that I would already be uncomfortable doing it with people I know, strangers would be out of the question. Maybe in a few years time, if I'm better with people again, it would be okay. But for now, ugh, that would, it would freak me out way too much. <laughs> like my body posture, <laughs> it says everything. It's like, no. <laughs> But yes, I, I do want to share my travel experience. I do want to share travel adventures with, with people, just not at the moment. It's kind of a weird one to end on, but uh, this is all the questions I have for now. I think it's long enough. I hope I answered most of your questions. Thank you so much for sending them in. I mean, last time... Last time I made, I mean, last time I made a Q&A video, I just got a handful, and I really had to go through every video to find them. And this time I got a whole bunch, so I'm really flattered. I'm really honored that you would um, <laughs> ask me questions. I love the little community that we have here. It's like it's really cool. So I'm gonna go uh, lie in an ice bath because I'm. It's not even noon, and I'm I'm dying. I'm sweating. It's way too hot. Can't wait for it to rain a little but yeah i'm gonna go cool down and then i'll edit and i'll see you guys very soon in the next video i still got a few more for you uh about this trip so stick around oh and obviously thank you to my patrons for the support for this video again devil khan kaino kimura thank you guys so much i really appreciate it thank you also to everyone who watches my video that is a form of support and people who have sent me coffees really really cool and this is the t-shirt of the day that I'm promoting through my Japaniku merch store. It is the pixel iku art which I really like and I spent a lot of time making it for that little um, animated <laughs> iku walk that I made for the videos and I haven't showed it that many times in the vlog so I'm a little bit disappointed so put it on a t-shirt just the characters um, <laughs> that one link all the links everywhere too hot need to go Thank you for watching. I'll wear you. See you next time. Oh god, you're really far away. <laughs>